Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I've decided that we will do plain things again because it's the most interesting way to get the science, if still very dangerous for the Kerbals, uh, we will still proceed with it. And so we are going to change our contracts a little bit because we had taken the experimental rocket planes contract. That's probably dangerous right now, we saw that previously. Uh, I'm going to take the X-Planes Mach 2. Uh, there's a mid-supersonic one. Uh, maybe we should take that first, just as a test. But we really wanted to go Mach 2. On the other hand, this one actually has better completion rate, I mean, uh, completion rewards. The Mach 2 supersonic, which is required, doesn't give us any of these points and gives us fewer little stars. Uh, this one gives us more stars and more of those points. So, I guess we might as well. Alright, we'll take this one first. So I've designed a new plane because we are aiming for Mach 2 and the previous plane, the XL, could barely get above Mach 1.5. It struggled with that. And I've removed the rocket tanks because we can't really do the jet and rocket thing together. Well, certainly not for this contract. And those were heavy. Uh, we had the fuel sort of uh, blocked in, even though we didn't have it full up on the fuel. Uh, we actually are underutilizing this tank because now it's really long, and we have fuel in the wings, actually, I decided to use that. So, it's a different configuration. You can probably guess why I have the air intake further up front. Yes, that's right, it is because of the transonic design thing, and uh, this makes it smoother, so... Yeah, that's why it's there. And we have a canard now, so hopefully that'll help us get off the ground a little bit quicker. We had problems with that. And also we had problems with the landing gear surviving, right? And I have figured that that's because the small landing gear has a max speed of 100 here. Uh, this is the medium landing gear with 150, and so we have medium landing gear, medium landing gear, and medium landing gear. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that I've tweak scaled it, and it says here max safe speed 87 meters per second. So, does that mean I have to have ridiculously large landing gear? Because, like, you know, the, the max safe speed and the max safe load aren't related, right? <laughs> I mean... Uh, what can I do here to make sure that I survive? It's gotta be tough to get off the ground as it is. I guess I'll have to make it larger, but, you know, I mean, this can carry 16.88 tons. I'm only 4.8. So, I object. Weird. But the mass is just ridiculous. Uh, the landing gear mass, if we take that off, that's 0.2 tons. So they're 0.2 tons a piece. Oh, they've rescaled down. Uh, so they're a huge part of the mass of this because of this max safe speed thing, but I don't want to take any chances on that. Okay, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on that. Um, uh, maybe we'll... Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at the max safe load and... Uh, let's try for 100. How about that? Uh, yeah, I'm worried about it. I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on tooling. You'll just have to assume that I have tooled things <laughs> and uh, we'll move on. And same with KCT and the training and all that business. I'm not going to waste time on it. So, okay. Build. Okay, well, it's looking shiny. Oh, my throttle isn't working, but we've got the fly-by-wire there. Okay. Oh, the parachutes are sort of buried by the air intake, but we do have parachutes. Okay, let's go. We really don't need to be full throttle here. Oh, okay, we're off the ground. Thank goodness. Let me get the landing gear in before it breaks. <laughs> okay. We don't have that much fuel. Mach 2 flight, I actually uh, put the Mach 2 flight science in there, even though we're only aiming for 500 meters per second this time. 
So we'll take what, which one we get. If I can get to Mach 2, I'll do Mach 2 because we want the science. And I'll just dump that contract and do Mach 2. If it doesn't look like we're going to get Mach 2, we'll do that contract. <laughs> okay, we're past Mach 1, but I've got to turn around. Okay, it is accelerating. It takes 36 minutes to get 10 units from the Mach 2 flight thing. We don't have that much fuel. I mean, we can put more fuel in, of course. This was a very test flight sort of situation. Looking at its very reluctant acceleration, it could perform better as we get higher, but I think we'll try this contract. Okay, we're in the contract range. The engine temperature suggests that we can't get too much faster either. I don't know if it can do Mach 2. This was fitted on the F-101. That got to Mach 1.7 as well, so... But not Mach 2. F-104 had a better engine. Okay, we've got it. Let's turn around. Well, I would like to land properly, but we'll see. We don't have a lot of kerosene left. Well, I think we can land. Alright, coming in. Hopefully we can stop. Oh, oh, okay, bounced. Oh, uh, you know what, let's go around. Oh, I've got caps lock on, whoops. Oh, great. Accidental fine controls threw me off. Well, uh, uh oh. Oh, don't bounce, don't bounce, don't bounce. Uh, oh no. Oh, I should have just used the parachutes. Ah, uh, we do not have a long enough runway for this. Poor Darwin. Ah, uh, it's not a space mission. Still, um, maybe we should stop doing the plain things, or I should just use the parachutes. Uh, maybe they should always eject. Ah. <laughs> um, uh, well, we still weren't getting to Mach 2. I don't think we have... It is the most powerful jet we've got, so... And the size of the cockpit means that carrying something smaller isn't going to be helpful anyway. But we could just get the science, potentially. There's all sorts of science. This one takes 36 minutes. High altitude flight. That requires a minimum surface speed of 200, uh, sorry, 650 meters per second. It doesn't actually specify anything about altitude. The Mach 2 flight has an altitude requirement. The supersonic flight has an altitude requirement. But the high altitude flight doesn't. Hypersonic flight is a whole lot of business that we're not going to get to. So uh, there's 2.8 units left, I think. That's not much. But we're definitely struggling to push this to even Mach 1.7. We will need a better engine to get to Mach 2. Let's see what happens if we get a lighter engine. 
Well, that's a lighter engine. I think we'll need drag chutes if we're going to do this, but we'll probably keep the other fitted parachutes as well, just in case. So we'll have drag chutes. This is the uh, J48 Tay turbojet. But lighter is good. Its thrust weight ratio isn't horrible. And it's got immense duration. We could probably reduce the fuel load. Oh, it's interesting. It seems to be reading these bumps from the engine itself. The inner diameter of the body, because we have a hollow body here to fit the engine, um, actually changes the curve there. I'm not too sure it ought to. But, uh, that might not be quite what we want to have happen. Might be a flaw in this whole hollow body thing. But I didn't want to have the fuel that would be taking up the volume that the engine takes up, that's all. Now you can get this fairly light. And a thrust to weight ratio of 1. Let's get those drag chutes on. Still worried about it though. Okay, well we have drag chutes. Well, XLJ2. And let's find another victim. Duncan Rivera. Oh, we need somebody with irrational courage. Tanike Smits. I don't know how to pronounce her first name, but Smits will have to do. Engineer, though. Oh, we don't want an engineer flying. I think all, all we can do is get Duncan Rivera, then. All right, we've got two Kerbals now, but only one is a pilot. I don't know if that makes any difference in RP-1, but my guess is it probably does. There's this radial air intake. What kind of area? 0.3, that's 0.45. Hmm, no, maybe it'd cause less drag. We don't need as much area. This needs 0.246. I sort of liked what this other one did for our curve. I mean, I don't even know how it does that. <laughs> right? I don't know how it does that. But it seems like a good thing. Okay, here goes nothing. We've got Duncan Rivera, pilot. All right. I do have to say that the brakes seem much weaker than I'm used to in KSP, and I'm wondering if they weakened it for some weakened them for some reason. Uh, we'll set that aside for now. I'll have to check some numbers later on. But all right, we have atmospheric autopilot on, and let's throw down just a little bit. And we are trying for Mach two again, but we can't get too much data because we don't have that much fuel here. But I don't know if the engine, this engine in particular, might not be able to sustain Mach 2 for very long. Or at all. Okay, gear retracted safely. It's probable that they have all the Mach 2 technology in the next tech on the tree and that these are all deliberately non-Mach 2 capable things. Well, this is much stickier going transonic than the other one. I think uh, the engine is just not very well suited for it. Despite having plenty of thrust for our purposes, it's just not optimized for going past Mach 1. So we have the thrust to weight ratio, but it's just really sticky. I mean, this is really absurd, actually. I tried to uh, do the transonic stuff as usual. I gotta turn around for now. But now it's not even getting the thrust that we're used to. Oh, maybe it's the intake, actually. But then when it's pointing down, it should get better intake air. I'm not sure. 
well, has the usual trouble slowing down. Which, you know, I sort of designed it for. Maybe I should lob a film camera somewhere. Though recovering the film cameras can be tricky depending on where you lob them. Well. Touchdown. Please strike shoots. Do something. Quickly. We need bigger drag shoots. Well, at least Duncan's safe, but we overran the runway for sure. Okay. Cover. Uh, yeah, recover to SPH. We can replace the engine. Yeah, I, I don't think we can continue like this with the planes. Uh, we probably want the better engines, mature supersonic flights. So we need at least four research for that. And what we're really trying to get is some research for satellite aeroscience. So, I'm going to try and use a film camera, and we're going to lob it, hopefully, to the savannah. If we take a look at our science here. Yeah, shores and savannah, we could get nearly five on. Shores is tough because they're thin, and you have to stay above them in space low. Um, we could be flying high. That's another thing. That's a pretty good amount of value, but for flying high we're going to need rockets too. Anyway, um, I think Savannah should be in southern uh, Brazil or Argentina or something like that. Uh, mountains are conceivable if we like fly along Chile, but it's not easy to get to. So what we're going to do is actually burn the second stage. Instead of using the second stage as a braking engine to slow us down, we're just going to burn it so that we get far enough in order to do the film camera far enough from the Space Center to get interesting biomes. And we'll just risk it as far as the return of this. We'll of course cut the engine at the appropriate time if it seems like we're going to be over a good biome already. I'll estimate where the savanna is. and. Yeah, we've got a uh, substantial probe core here, controllable mass 3, it's already um, tooled probe core, so we don't have to worry about that. Everything is tooled already. And we have a science core up here, and the film camera, and a parachute. And we'll just see what it can tolerate. Okay, so we'll just head south and cover as much distance as possible, but we do have to recover this, so it's tough. Um, I might try and shade a little bit to the west so that we can potentially get to the Andes. We'll see. Okay. Let's say heading 200. All right, ignition. And launch. All right. Um, all right, separation, ignition. I'm actually going to arm the parachute right now. I'm going to cut it there. This is probably going to be too much. We'll see. There's mountains and desert over there. But it looks like I picked a bad arc. This is all tropics. I did not... I was hoping for Savannah. We had gotten Savannah at a certain other time. It's grasslands here. Savannah is over here, but it's mixed in with tropics, so it'd be hard to hit. Okay, it's running. I think there's mountains. Possibly desert. But it's the recovery part that's um, troublesome here. We've got a decoupler to decouple off the stage, but I might let the stage ablate. Ah, we lost the film camera and the parachute. Okay, so that's too harsh. 
we can't do it that way. But we'll aim for Savannah instead. I'll build another one and we'll head for that direction. And ignition. And launch. So, a little bit to the east, actually, this time. Okay, that's what we have there. Separation. Oh, we probably shouldn't have used the little SRBs yet. Hopefully the RCS thrusters can settle the fuel down. What we're gonna do is, we're probably gonna have this go radial when we start going down. And that way, or just point up, basically. Just arrest our descent. Ignition. Yeah, uh, hopefully that'll get us some savanna. Well, 1.8, and now we're running the in atmosphere stuff, but I can't stage, I won't be able to do the decoupler, so we'll hopefully ablate properly. Oh, I've got to arm the parachute. Oh gosh. Anyway, let's see. There's a chance of litho breaking. Or not. Okay. You know though, uh, we really need a pad that has more staff and can build faster. Uh, we could probably hire more people. I mean, we can hire for zero right now. So, um, let's just hire more people. But uh, we can't put anybody more on this pad. I don't know what makes for the limit, but... Okay, well we got all the free ones. We could probably get a few extra. Maybe have some dedicated to building planes and some dedicated to building rockets on this pad. We'll see. I know uh, that they're supposed to be more efficient if they do the same thing. I don't know exactly how that works, whether um, they'll be more efficient at building 4-ish 5s if they've built 4-ish 1, 2s, and 3s, right? I mean, most of it's the same, right? Uh, so I don't know how much synergy there is there. Uh, as far as research, we just, uh, there's, we're at bottlenecked on the actual science, so I don't think we need to hire any more. Efficiency here says 90.4%, so... Might as well throw all the rest of the engineers into the hangar. Okay, SAS on. Throttle up. And ignition. And launch. I mean, we seem to have a good thing going last time. Or good enough, anyway. So we'll try that. One more time. Okay, going for a somewhat higher lob. I guess it's a little bit further. Alright, starting that. Oh, I should have started it earlier to get the in-flight one. And getting the shoot ready already. And separation. Alright, ignition. Well, oh, we've lost communication. So I can't separate it off or anything. Oh, why did they fire it so soon? Ah, oh, come on. We had used this before, I thought. Oh, we might have actually. Oh, ah, so close. So close to litho breaking properly. Oh well. Earth, main, main shoot, mass to use. Oh, why is it, why is it at a drogue shoot level? I have it at main shoot. <laughs> That's not fair. I must have misclicked something somewhere. Oh, well, while we're at it, let's have it be able to deal with that core as well. Okay, save edits. 
All right, maybe third time's the charm. Throttle up, SAS on. Is this the third third time? Anyway, ignition. And launch. All right. Separation. Okay, I'll fire the Veronique a little bit earlier once we get pointed up here. A ignition. Maybe that'll give me a chance to separate the stage as well. I don't know if I want to separate the stage. It could come back to hit us or something. We don't have any maneuvering thrusters up here. Let's cut there. That's a little bit risky. So we're covering a big chunk of Brazil there. Well, we lost AV. Oh, we lost everything. It was too fast. Uh... I brought it pretty close to this sort of speed and height before, but I guess this was too much. Okay. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. We have learned a few things. And launch. Okay, that's that. And separation. Okay, lighting the Veroni at 200 kilometers, which is lower than we did last time. We have a station in Chile there, but we wouldn't be able to get to it, so. Customary explosion of parts. Well, safe this time. <laughs> well, something exploded. Recover, recover. No more recovery before it topples and accidentally blows up the film camera. Okay, 1.5 credits earned. Well, that's not good enough. But if we could get two on the next try, we can get mature supersonic flight and then try to get more science from the planes. So, all right, we'll do one more and we'll just toss it the same way. I'll try and light the Veronique a little bit earlier than last time. So not 200 kilometers in the hope that we can coast for a little bit longer over to Savannah and get more data. Okay, SAS on, throttle up and ignition. And launch. No, went a little bit too high this time. I didn't want to do all this. They made me do this. I'd rather get science from orbit, but we don't have heat shields. We could send the film camera to orbit, but we don't have heat shields, so... Okay, I'll ignite Veronique now. Okay, seems like I'll probably be alright. Okay. All right, survived. Uh, all right, all right, stop rocking, stop rocking. All right, normal recovery. If we do have four, should we just go for the... Maybe we should just go for a little bit more. We have four barely, just barely got it. Um, maybe we have no choice but to try to do the plane research
But we could save up three more to get the satellite era science. We could try to get to some other biome. Well, I think we'll take the risk. Let's try in the next video to get a Mach 2 plane finally. So with that goal in mind, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.